Good evening, everybody. I'm Frank Beckman from WJR News Talk 760, the great voice of the Great Lakes. And tonight, I am conspicuous by my absence. It is not a coincidence that on this night of the biggest speech of the year by Mark Hackle, I've decided to stay home. It is, all kidding aside, because I've had to require another back operation, the ninth of my life. Otherwise, as a proud graduate of Cusno High School in Warren, and having attended Macomb County Community College, you know I'd love to be there as part of the fifth annual State of the County Address. But better that you have to sit through one of these tedious speeches and I don't. <laughs> Again, all kidding aside, ladies and gentlemen, please help me by giving a warm welcome to a man I'm proud to call my good friend and lifelong advocate of Macomb County, your executive, Mr. Mark Packer. Good evening and welcome to Macomb County. Thank you for joining us this evening for the annual State of the County Address. I want to thank Frank for that colorful and somewhat accurate introduction. As Frank mentioned, uh, he is a Macomb County guy, and I can tell you, he has never forgotten where he came from. Frank, I want to wish you well on your surgery, and if you need someone to fill in for you for your show, you know that I'm not shy, and you know how to get a hold of me. I'd also like to thank Macomb Community College and President Jim Jacobs for hosting us again this evening, as well as our presenting sponsor, St. John Providence, and all of our sponsors who are listed in your program this evening. Your continued support is greatly appreciated. Before we begin, I, I think it appropriate that we recognize some of the regional leaders who are with us here this evening. And so please help me in giving a warm Macomb County welcome to the St. Clair County Chairman of the Board of Commissioners, Mr. Jeff Bohm. House lights, please. <laughs> Wayne County Executive, Mr. Warren Evans. <laughs> and although Brooks is conspicuous by his absence too, I'll make sure he gets copies of this. Um, he has sent representation of some very good people from his office, uh, his county executives, his deputy county executives, Mr. Bob Datto, Phil Bernalini, and Malcolm Brown. Gentlemen, thank you. As well as the deputy mayor of the city of Detroit, Mr. Ike McKinnon. oftentimes doesn't get the recognition he deserves, but the director of the Huron-Clinton Metropolitan Authority, Mr. George Pfeiffer. And the newly appointed president and CEO of the United Way for Southeastern Michigan, Dr. Herman Gray. And as well, I'd like to recognize, if I may, uh, my counterparts here in Macomb County who were able to make it this evening. Our clerk, Carmela Sabaw, our prosecutor, Eric Smith, and the board chair, Mr. David Flynn. <laughs> and our exceptional judiciary. Thank you very much for being here this evening. Now, I've gotten in trouble for this before, so I guess I better uh, make, uh, make good on this. Um, a person who really doesn't like a lot of recognition, and uh, it's interesting, yet somebody who's very important to me in life, uh, my wife, Tracy Hackle. <laughs> my dad said, don't you dare introduce me, so I won't. So, <laughs> we appreciate all of you being here this evening. Tonight, we are going to explore the state of Macomb County. We will take a look at some of the facts and figures that illustrate the growth we are experiencing. We will tell a few stories about the world-class assets we have right here in our backyard. As well, we'll look to the future and explore what's next for this county. Over the past five years, people have heard me talk about the great things happening in Macomb. Every chance we've had, we let people know about the incredible transformation happening right here in Macomb County. But before I get into the details, I want to let someone else tell you what they think about Macomb County. As you may recall, President Barack Obama was at Macomb Community College a few months ago. Our friends at the college pulled together a video of some of his comments, and here's what the president had to say. 
Education has always been the secret to America's success. That's one of the reasons we built the biggest, strongest middle class. And in places like Macomb County, you could feel secure knowing that if you worked hard, you'd have a chance to find a good job, buy a home, raise a family, send your kids to college. Over the last seven years, America's been graduating more students from community colleges than ever before. Of course, we don't just want every student to be able to attend community college. We want them to attend a great community college. And that's the other reason I came back to Macomb. This is one of the best, most innovative community colleges in the country because students like the ones here are not just making the best investment in your future, but you're also making the best possible investment in the country's future. A proud moment. Now, regardless of your political views, I want you to think about this for a moment. The 44th president of the United States was in Macomb County. He could have been anywhere in the world, but instead he stopped by Macomb Community College, not to talk about politics or stump for votes, but to discuss opportunity and promise. The president said, everybody deserves a chance to make it. And that is exactly how we see Macomb County, as a place where everybody can make it. We want Macomb County to be a place for everyone. Regardless of your socioeconomic status, race, ethnicity, gender, religious affiliation, or political ideology, we want there to be a place for you here in Macomb County. Macomb is a place that is on the move. From Warren to Memphis, from St. Clair Shores to Bruce Township, there is an energy that continues to build in our county. A surge of community pride and activity that is fueling a visible transformation and providing opportunities for everyone. We see it every day in our neighborhoods, our places of business, and where we choose to unwind and relax. Macomb County is trending in a positive direction. And the foundation of our progress is people. Approximately 870,000 of them. For decades, Macomb County's population has been on the rise, and this trend is continuing. Since 2010, an average, on average, 19 new people a day have made Macomb County their home. This rush of new residents can be seen all across Macomb County. Our core urban communities are witnessing an influx of new residents anchored by young families and first-time home buyers. Our central and northern communities are emerging as destinations for families looking for high-value suburban living. And more of our seniors are choosing to age in place rather than heading off to a traditional retirement destination. We remain one of the fastest growing counties in the state, and that brings many other benefits with it. Just a few years ago, we faced an unstable housing market. Home values were plummeting, new construction was at a standstill, and foreclosures were all too common. Today, Macomb County's housing market is rebounding. The average home value in Macomb County is up more than 20% in the past three years. And more than 8,700 housing units were added in Macomb County since 2010. With population and housing on the rise, we have begun to see positive trends in the county's diversity. Over the past five years, our African-American, Asian, and Hispanic population groups have reached all-time highs. Immigrants from across the globe continue to settle in Macomb County in hopes of a better life. Today, one out of every 10 Macomb County residents is foreign born. Our gains in population, housing, and diversity are coupled with positive trends in income, employment, and educational attainment. More Macomb County residents are participating in higher education, with almost 60% of the residents over the age of 25 now possessing at least some college education. Macomb County's highly skilled workforce continues to grow, now numbering 416,000 individuals. Our unemployment rate has dropped to nearly 5%, and median household income has spiked to $53,000. So let's add it all up. Population, housing, diversity, employment, income, educational attainment are all heading in a positive direction. This is a comforting assessment of where Macomb County stands. 
and validates the outstanding work and commitment of people all around this great county. Simply put, Macomb County is trending in the right direction. <laughs> Macomb's executive form of government has only been in place for five years, and in this short time, we have started to better understand the positive impact county government can have. Collectively, we have learned how to do so much more to advance Macomb County. The opportunities are out there, and we are committed to being a driving force for progress. Let's look back a few years. After taking office, we began a full-scale assessment of the county. We examined the many functions of county government and explored unique characteristics of communities inside and outside Macomb. We engaged in ongoing conversations with elected officials and government administrators. We spoke with private business, community organizations, nonprofits, our educational partners, and area residents. Our goal was to get a better feel of where the county was, but more importantly, we wanted to gauge our capacity to improve. Through these conversations, we began to develop a course of action, which led us to a number of core community and economic development strategies that focused on three important goals. Improving the county's economic base, enhancing our quality of life, and redefining the role and function of county government. Tonight, I want to discuss these three strategies and highlight some of the major accomplishments we've seen. Now, I'm not suggesting that county government is totally responsible for all of this, but I do believe government can create an environment that helps make these things happen. So let's start with the first, and that's improving the county's economic base. Our economic development strategies have been focused on a number of things. Strengthening our core industries, such as automotive, advanced manufacturing, defense, and aerospace. Leveraging technology and innovation to expand capabilities. Encouraging entrepreneurship and investing in workforce development. Some of the greatest economic gains in Macomb County have been in the field of manufacturing. The cornerstone of Macomb County's economy is, in fact, manufacturing. There are more than 1,600 manufacturing firms located in Macomb County, which employ nearly 75,000 workers. While this is still down from historic highs, it represents a 48% increase in manufacturing jobs since 2009. This industry now has an annual $13 billion economic impact on the county. To illustrate how substantial our resurgence in manufacturing has been, consider this. There are more than 3,100 counties in the United States. Think about it, 3,100 counties. Where do you think Macomb County ranked in manufacturing growth this past year? Do you think it was the top half of those 3,100? How about the top 100? No, how about number three? That's right, just this past year, Macomb County ranked third in the nation in manufacturing growth. This ranking is a testament to the opportunity still associated with production-based operations in Macomb County. We have been manufacturing things here for generations, but it is important to know that this is not your parents' or your grandparents' manufacturing. The growth is in advanced manufacturing, where technology and innovation come together and redefine production. Examples of companies leading the way in the county the Paslin Company, with their new $20 million manufacturing and engineering center, which will bring 200 new full-time technical positions to Macomb County. Fourier Automation's $12 billion manufacturing and business operations facility in Shelby Township. Forcia, investing $8 million in upgrading its Sterling Heights plant. Exalta Coatings, their systems. Modernizing their Mount Clemens plant, which now employs more than 700 workers and is viewed as a global leader in liquid and powder coating. In fact, Exalta has been so successful, they were named General Motors Supplier of the Year. And speaking of General Motors, earlier this year, GM announced a $1 billion investment in the Warren Tech Center that will include new design studios, upgraded research and development offices, and inject much needed capital into the campus infrastructure. And it will add 2,600 new jobs over the next four years. And let's not forget about that billion-dollar investment Fiat Chrysler made in the Sterling Heights assembly plant. That facility was targeted for foreclosure, but now it's one of the most modern plants in the world. And just last week, 
We learned that Ford is also planning to invest a billion dollars in its two Sterling Heights facilities. Think about this. Three separate billion dollar investments by three world's largest companies. I can't think of another county in the country that can lay claim to that kind of investment and that kind of commitment to making a community their home. When others told us that manufacturing was dead, we disagreed. We kept manufacturing as a core industry, and that has paid some huge dividends for this county. But we've also targeted defense and aerospace as a core industry. You have heard me say that Macomb County is Michigan's defense capital, and here is why I say that. This past year, Macomb County companies were awarded more than a billion dollars in defense contracts. This was more than half of all contracts awarded in the state of Michigan. The headquarters of the Michigan Defense Center is now located in Sterling Heights. Macomb County, we are actively involved in virtually every major defense initiative in the state. For example, Macomb was instrumental in securing a $6 million grant from the Department of Defense to support the Advanced Michigan Defense Collaborative. This initiative will be co-chaired by our Planning and Economic Development Department and the Michigan Defense Center. The Macomb St. Clair Michigan Works Agency will be the fiscal agent responsible for this grant. This collaborative, this effort itself spans 13 counties in Southeast Michigan. Funds from the grant will support 15 major projects that promote research and talent development essential for the defense industry. These projects will benefit cross-sector industries and will lead to enhancements in robotics, automated systems, connected vehicles, as well as cybersecurity. The Defense Collaborative will also oversee a defense industry economic impact analysis, which is part of the state's protect and grow defense strategy. This major grant provides further evidence that Macomb is succeeding in its commitment to be a state's leader in defense. Macomb County is also making a name for itself in aerospace. Companies like Boeing, Lockheed Martin, Bell Helicopter, and as well, NASA. I mean, they're actively engaged with Macomb County suppliers. For example, KUKA Systems North America is investing $14 million in their Clinton Township facility in order to help develop the fuselage for the Boeing 777, shout out. <laughs> Triumph Gear Systems is spending $15 million to double their facility size to meet the growing demands of Bell, Boeing, and Lockheed Martin. And did you know that some of the most advanced tooling and machining in the world is being done inside of an old tennis court in Warren? This is where Futuramic Tool and Engineering is building the SLS rocket booster that will power a manned spacecraft to Mars. The mission to Mars starts here in Macomb County. As you might imagine, the vitality of our military and defense operations is critically dependent on federal spending. And recently, Macomb County received some good news in that regard. Last month, the Senate voted 91 to 3 in support of a new National Defense Authorization Act that will positively impact Macomb's defense organization. The bill includes over a billion dollars for research, development, and production programs at General Dynamics, Oshkosh, BAE Systems, and another $200 million for research overseen by TARDAC and Warren. And we learned just last week that BAE Systems was also awarded a $100 million contract to provide engineering and program management for a new marine combat vehicle. All of this demonstrates the reasons why defense and aerospace have been a central part of Macomb's core economic development strategies. But what may be the best news, I think, out of this defense bill is the decision to postpone the retirement of the A-10 fighter. It is widely recognized as the best close air combat support aircraft available, yet year after year it has been on the budget chopping block. The A-10 is a prized asset at Selfridge, where it remains mission ready at all times. I don't know if many of you are aware of this, but this past summer Selfridge troops were called to duty to help fight ISIS in Southwest Asia. This was the largest deployment of the Michigan Air National Guard personnel since the Korean War. 
Their mission was to support Operation Inherit Resolve. Our Selfridge A-10s flew over 1,600 combat sorties. And if you don't know what a sortie is, you can ask the general later. Logging more than 11,000 flying hours. The KC-135 Stratotankers were also there to assist. They flew more than 300 combat sorties and offloaded over 8 million pounds of fuel. I believe that the exceptional performance of these aircraft, their pilots and crew contributed to the decision to postpone retiring the A-10s in the immediate future. The Selfridge deployment returned home at the end of October after playing a critical role in our nation's defense. Here with us this evening is the commanding officer at Selfridge, General Doug Slocum. General, we are both pleased and relieved to learn that everyone who was deployed made their way back home. General. Now, he is certainly embarrassed because he is a humble Macomb County guy, I'm going to tell you. So, but you have our commitment that we're going to continue to do everything we can to protect and grow our defense and military assets, especially those at Selfridge, our hometown air base, and TACOM. Now, the final element of our core economic development strategy that I want to discuss this evening is workforce development. Even the most sophisticated economic development strategies will fail if companies can't find the workers they need. Just four years ago, we had a severe shortage of jobs. Macomb's workforce dipped below 400,000, and unemployment topped 12%. But even then, some jobs went unfilled because applicants lacked the skills employers needed. Today, our workforce has rebounded. However, in many fields, skilled workers are still in critically short supply. I am pleased to say that a network of county organizations have stepped up to address this skills gap. Macomb County Schools are placing greater emphasis on science, technology, engineering, and math, and expanding career technical education programs. Macomb Community College, they just received a $3 million grant to develop the Michigan Apprentice Plus program, which will target IT and manufacturing occupations. And the Macomb St. Clair Michigan Works Agency expanded worker readiness and retraining, including rapid reentry for returning veterans. Many local businesses have developed their own apprenticeship and academy programs, providing prospective workers with hands-on experience and on-the-job training. But probably our most creative accomplishment in helping fill the skills gap is Manufacturing Day. This innovative program addresses some of the common misconceptions about manufacturing. By giving companies an opportunity to open their doors and show high school students what advanced manufacturing is all about. This October was our third year participating in Manufacturing Day and Macomb County had one of the largest coordinated events in the nation. With the support of local school districts, we had more than 1,800 students hosted at over 40 job sites. Students and educators got to tour these manufacturing facilities and see the remarkable career opportunities available in Macomb County. Through programs like these, we are addressing the skills gap and making Macomb County a more, more attractive place for business investment. So here's where the county stands today. Our core industries are expanding. Our workforce is growing. Future talent is being prepared. And our economic base is strong. This gives us the opportunity to pursue our second major goal, and that is enhancing our quality of life. In Macomb County, we appreciate the value of place. We know full well that people can make their living in one place and then choose to live in another. The purpose of Make Macomb Your Home is to help people realize that Macomb is a great place to live, to work, to play, and to raise a family. So when it comes to quality of life, once again, Macomb's goal is to offer something for everyone. One of our major initiatives has been the blue economy. The goal of the blue economy was to enhance both water quality and water access. 
which in turn will provide financial benefits as well as enhancing the quality of life. And it is working. From new canoe and kayak liveries on the Clinton River to world-class fishing tournaments on Lake St. Clair, more people than ever before are accessing our waterways. This is providing a big boost to local economies. One example was last summer's Bassmaster Tournament, which was televised why it was actually televised worldwide on ESPN, giving unprecedented exposure to Lake St. Clair and adding $3 million to our local economy. But while water access is improving, I think water quality was the big winner this year. The county, along with a network of partners, secured $20 million from the Environmental Protection Agency under the Great Lakes Restoration Initiative. This funding will support nine major projects that will address several areas of concern within the Clinton River watershed and restore acres of habitat, miles of shoreline, and control invasive species. But interesting enough, with all this excitement, um, just this morning, this morning we got news, and uh, I couldn't be more happy for one of the cities here in uh, Macomb County. We received word that the DNR Trust Fund Board recommended a $2.8 million grant to the city of New Baltimore to purchase the Schmidt Marina. That's a big deal. This grant will enable the city to acquire the 17-acre site and transform it into a waterfront destination. And it'll link it to its historic, walkable downtown. That is some incredibly exciting news for that small town here in Macomb County. Now, not all of the excitement is on the water. We continue to develop and upgrade our parks and trails. There are new and expanded races and festivals. Orchards have become wineries. Small town downtowns are becoming more vibrant. Outdoor entertainment and fireworks fill our summer nights. Shopping, dining, and sporting activities have never offered more variety than they do today. And soon, we're going to see more. A $5 million expansion at CGA Barrymore's, adding a roller coaster, zip lines, and other attractions a planned Cabela store in Chesterfield Township. <laughs> I want that one. 155 miles of interconnected trails here in this county, and a million dollar playscape, and a new sandy beach at Lake St. Clair Metro Park. That's exciting. And finally, minor league baseball is coming to Southeast Michigan. The first pitch will be thrown out in June at Jimmy John's Field in the city of Utica when the Birmingham Bloomfield Beavers, the Eastside Diamond Hoppers, and the Utica Unicorns will launch the new United Shore Professional Baseball League. Jimmy John's Field will be much more than a place to play ball. It will host a wide variety of community events and provide a venue like no other in the region. Investments like these are why an ever-increasing number of people choose to make Macomb their home. Now, the third goal I want to discuss this evening is redefining the role and function of county government. Fiscal responsibility has become a hallmark of Macomb County. Under the new form of government, we have produced five years of balanced budgets. And we are now producing a five-year forecast that shows all future operating expenses will be covered by all forecasted revenues. The county continues to enjoy an enviable AA-plus bond rating, and all of our audits have produced clean opinions. Because the county has such a sound financial condition, we have put ourselves in a position to invest in our future. This past year, we were able to take on one of the largest financial transactions in Macomb County's nearly 200-year history. Through the sale of $263 million in bonds, we were able to fully fund our retiree health care obligations. That's a big, that's a big work. That's good work. And commit $65 million to much needed facility upgrades. Over the past few years, you've heard me focus a lot of my remarks, usually on what might be called the business side of county government. Things like finance, facilities, human resources, and IT. But tonight, I want to talk just a little bit about what might be called the mission side of county government. Things like public health, 
community service, employment, training, mental health, senior services, animal welfare, and public safety. Even though our economy has rebounded, there are still many residents who need supporting services. Fortunately, we have a host of staff and volunteers dedicated to improving the lives of thousands of county residents each year, every day. They accomplish this by providing Head Start programs for young children, supplying food to needy families through more than 50 county pantries, delivering meals to homebound seniors and aiding them with chore services, assuring that veterans receive their full benefits, administering vaccinations and monitoring public risk, caring for and sheltering animals, assisting people with physical limitations or those that are battling substance abuse, and the list goes on. As important as this work is, oftentimes it goes unnoticed. So we do get noticed people sometimes coming up and saying or sharing a story and thanking us for the good work that these people do. But tonight, I want to tell you just one story as a way of recognizing all the special people who do this kind of work. It's a story about a baby named Madison. And our Women's and Infants and Children's program, commonly known as WIC. Three years ago, Madison and her mom were part of our WIC program. While in the Verculin building, a county building for other business, mom noticed that three-week-old Madison was bleeding from her mouth and her nose. Not knowing where to turn, she ran down the hall to the WIC office. The staff immediately called 911 and placed the baby on her side to prevent her from choking in her own blood. Knowing where the ambulance would arrive, the staff then rushed Madison to that entrance to save precious time. Madison was transported to the hospital where she was placed in intensive care and eventually she made a full recovery. Here's a portion of an email Madison's mom sent to the WIC staff just last month. And if you'll allow me, I want to read exactly her words in this email. About this time, three years ago today, I ran screaming into your office because my three-year-old baby became suddenly ill. I've always thanked God for having those angels there for me that day. I never let this day go by without acknowledging the love and compassion I was shown. You all do incredible work. And if no one tells you today, thank you. Folks, here is a picture of Madison today. She is now a happy and healthy three-year-old. And with a style like that, I wouldn't be surprised to see her on stage someday. I'm going to warn her against public life, though, as an elected <laughs> official. And I've shared the story with you tonight for two reasons. First is to showcase a part of county government that is not always visible to the public. And second, as Madison's mother put it so well, to say thank you for the love and compassion that all of the staff and volunteers serving on the mission side of county government provide to our residents every day. We are indeed grateful, and I want to thank you all for what you do. And we can't talk about the mission side of government without mentioning public safety. Public safety has always been a priority in Macomb County, and we continue to make new investments to meet new demands. Here are just two of the examples of what Macomb is doing to make our community safer. The first is in expanding capabilities at Comtech. I think most of you are familiar with Comtech. You hear me talk about it quite frequently. It's our communications technology center that integrates emergency management, dispatch, traffic operations, and IT functions all under one roof. By installing additional cameras this past year, we can now visually monitor more than 300 critical intersections in this county. Those cameras provide real-time 360-degree high-resolution observations of things like traffic flow, accidents, weather conditions, and much more. With this enhanced technology, dispatchers can now physically see an incident that requires an emergency response and provide more accurate information to those first responders. 
That enhancement was the first. The second planned investment we have is to upgrade our emergency communications system. Nothing is more important to public safety than being able to communicate. And the system that we have today is good, but it's not great. This planned investment will get us there by providing five new tower sites and full reciprocal backup in partnership with the city of Warren. It'll provide better coverage in areas that are in need of it and provide interoperable connectivity for all public safety agencies within Macomb County. Now, I said there were two, but in light of some things that are going on right now, I do have to mention a third. And I know the sheriff wasn't able to make it here today, but he and I are pretty upset about something that, uh, that just happened a few weeks ago. And it was that the county received word that the sheriff's armored personnel carrier, it's not a tank, it's an armored personnel carrier, was being recalled by presidential order. The reason we were given is that police agencies shouldn't portray a military image. I couldn't disagree more. It's not about image. It's about ensuring the safety of the people who ensure our safety. If an act of terrorism or if there's an active shooter in a mall or a school, it's not the military who responds. It's local law enforcement who are your first responders. Ten years ago, the federal government gave local law enforcement these armored vehicles to protect our officers when they face these all too common situations. This vehicle carries, it has no weapons on it. Its only purpose is for safe transport. And now the president has taken them back. Unfortunately, as we sit here this evening, there's yet another tragic event unfolding in California. I heard the president say, as I was driving in here on my radio, I was listening to it, this is what he said. We know there are ways we can make America safer. Well, Mr. President, if you want to make our first responders safer, first thing tomorrow morning, rescind that order. And if we can't stop the presidential order, then we need to find a way to replace that armored vehicle and give our first responders the protection they deserve. That will be a top priority for me for the rest of this year and at the beginning of the year. I'd like to close this evening by talking about two visions for the future. The first relates to a challenge facing local governments all across the country. I am sure many of you are aware of a highly publicized jail death that occurred in the county a while back. I was extremely disappointed by the media coverage because it portrayed a severely distorted image of how our jail operates and unfairly portrayed the corrections officers as being cruel and uncaring. I told the media that our officers did nothing wrong and that when the real facts eventually come out in court, that obviously they would then know. Well, you probably haven't heard, but those facts did come out. And after hearing our argument, the judge dismissed all of the officers as defendants in that case. Now, you may not have something to celebrate, but when you think back about those images, there is without question a disturbing nature to it. And albeit we're upset about some of the media coverage, it sometimes gives an opportunity for us to really draw some public attention to a real issue that is happening with mental health and substance abuse in our communities and that affects the criminal justice system, especially at the county level. Estimates show that anywhere from a third to half of the people brought into a county jail are suffering from mental health or substance abuse issues. Some people are saying that jails are becoming a new asylum, leading to overcrowding, early release of prisoners. One way of dealing with the overcrowding issue, if you will, is to build a bigger jail. Well, that simple answer is not the solution. And as I always say, build and they will come. <laughs> Here in Macomb County, we are taking a smarter approach. The county is currently in the midst of a comprehensive study of jail processes as well as facilities. What the experts have told us, and we agree, is that the greatest opportunity for improvement is during the jail intake process. You may have heard or you may have known about a show that's called The First 48. You may not be aware, but it gets its name from what investigators have long known, 
And that is the first 48 hours after a crime has been committed are the most critical to solving the case. Well, the same principle can be applied to our jails because the most critical period in dealing with offenders is within that first 48 hours after their arrest. This is when physical health, mental health, or substance abuse issues can be determined. And that is when professional intervention can make a real difference. Confinement has never been, nor should it be, a substitute for treatment. So one vision for the coming year is for Macomb to undertake what I will call Intake 48. This will be a highly collaborative effort and will be part of the larger study currently underway. It will involve people from all facets of the criminal justice system as well as healthcare professionals. The goal is simple. Rethink and redesign the intake process so that we can better align our public safety responsibilities with the needs of offenders and make all options and services available to them within the first 48 hours following an arrest. I am confident that if we can redesign and centralize the intake process, we can reduce the need for jail space, we can improve public safety, and we can positively impact people's lives, especially those struggling with mental health and substance abuse. Now, the second vision is kind of one that is an emerging opportunity for Macomb County. There have been many exciting announcements this past year, the Jimmy John's Field, new attractions at C.J. Barrymore's, new retail stores, new hotels, new restaurants, new waterfront developments, new parks and trails, new festivals and tournaments. All of this is creating a wealth of new opportunities for county residents. But it is also creating an opportunity Macomb has never had before, the opportunity to become destination. Think about a weekend filled with all these adventures. A Friday night ball game at Jimmy John's Field, followed by some refreshments and a night stay in one of Macomb's 1,400 hotel rooms. Saturday morning, grab some breakfast and it's off to shop from outlet to upscale, Nordstrom to Cabela's. <laughs> Later, take the kids to C.J. Barrymore's or a metro park, canoe or kayak on a river, or paddleboard along a shoreline. Cap off your Saturday with a performance at Freedom Hill or the Macomb Center. Sunday morning, head out to Farmer's Market or to a local orchard for wine tasting or cider. Hike or bike an endless trail, run a race, attend a festival, or enter a tournament. Take a dinner cruise on the river or a discovery cruise on the lake. Tour a candy factory or a military museum. Or do any of a hundred other exciting things. The point is simply this. There are now attractive reasons for people to visit us and to spend some time and money in Macomb. You've heard about Pure Michigan? Well, this is Pure Macomb. If you were to ask me what was the most important thing that needed to be done when I first took office, without hesitation, I would say it was to better tell the Macomb story. The region and even the people living here needed to learn more about the real Macomb and that we are a county that is blessed with new residents, new ideas, and new opportunities. We are a county that has the best that nature has to offer. We are home to global companies and a talented workforce. We are a wonderful place to live, work, play, raise a family. We are a place that people are proud to call home. Momentum. We've talked about it before. A promise was made, trust instilled. We committed to move this county forward, but what you gave was so much more. We saw a community with spirit, passion, and drive. People who weren't intimidated by hard work, pushing the limits with determination and vision. And the result, progress. The world is watching now. We've got their attention. They see the value. More people make Macomb their home than ever before. Diversification in business is giving companies the opportunity to grow locally as well as globally. Around every corner, there's a new quality of life experience waiting to be discovered. And our ties with our regional neighbors have never been stronger. 
we weren't looking for awards or recognition, not even a pat on the back. We did it and we continue to do it because it's who we are. It's what we believe. After all, a promise is a promise. And all we want is what everyone wants, a place we are proud to call home. All of this is happening because of people like you. Everyone in this room is contributing in some way to building the Macomb that we are proud to call home. And I will continue to tell the Macomb story every chance I get. I want to thank all of you for giving me the opportunity to be your county executive. I hope you are as proud of this county as I am. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you for celebrating with us this evening. And I wish all of you a happy and safe holiday season. Thank you for coming.